It is the most violent and brutal act of political violence the Philippines has ever seen, sending shockwaves across the country and around the world. No, no words can really I mean, even approximate the description of what happened. They are all monsters. They are all demons. Who is behind the plan and execution of such a horrific crime? And why is there a trail of reported guilt leading up to the national government? The island of Mindanao, the second largest in the southern Philippines, is home to some of Southeast Asia's most exotic and remote tropical paradises. Deserted white sandy beaches stretch the coastline, and huge expanses of lush jungle reach inland as far as the eye can see. Yet there is barely any sign of mass tourism in sight. For years, Mindanao has been a theater of war, where rebel insurgency groups pose a threat to would-be tourists. But there is also another and very separate story of conflict here. Election season in the Philippines has been marked by violence, which now includes a mass killing. This is bandit territory. Fierce, armed militias are notorious for hiding along the roadside. They wait silently, under orders to ambush their rivals in a turf war that has been going on here for years. But they also ambush civilians, especially members of the press. Whenever we are assigned to go to these places, we feel that uh, we talk to our, I, I talk to my family, I talk to my wife, that uh, you'd be good because this might be my last assignment, but it's, it comes in a joke. But uh, it might happen. Since 1992, 68 journalists have been abducted or murdered in the Philippines, making the country one of the world's most dangerous places for journalists to work. Bandits think that when you have a journalist, when you kidnap a journalist, it's big money. You've got a TV network, TV station, to pay for their release. So they think it's good business for them. So why? On November 23, 2009, do 37 journalists choose to set off in a convoy on a journey through such dangerous territory? The convoy is traveling through the notorious province of Maguindanao, located in central Mindanao, situated in the southern Philippines. And while bandits may cause terror on the ground, they are frequently acting upon orders of powerful political families in the region. These families are known as clans. Clan culture has been etched into the Philippine political landscape for years. Central government may rule from the capital of Manila, but at regional level, it is said that political clans wield the real power in the provinces. Political clans have to be protected because anybody can be your enemy for as long as you are in, in the field of politics, your life is always at stake. And with this ongoing threat comes the need for self-preservation. The moment you get out of the house, you need protection. Because even if you're inside the car, outside of the car, outside, outside of the home, or even inside the home, somebody's out there to kill you. While political clans can play a positive role in Philippine society, here in the poverty-stricken province of Maguindanao, there is one clan which has done anything but that. Governing from the luxury of their opulent mansions, the Ampatuan family have reigned terror in Maguindanao for over a decade. The Ampatuan family is regarded as one of the most powerful in Maguindanao one of the richest also in Maguindanao. This is the feared family patriarch and governor, Andal Ampatuan Sr. Since 2001, the Ampatuans have maintained such an iron grip of fear on the province through the brutality of a fierce private militia. 
Well, the Ampatuans has maintained their own private armed groups purposely to reign terror in their province. That no one can dare to challenge them. But in mid-2009, the unthinkable happens. Somebody begins to make plans to rise up and challenge the rule of the Ampatuans. A rival clan head and local politician decides the Ampatuans' time is over. His name is Ismail Toto Mangudadatu. It was started uh, 2007 when I, 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 my, 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 I, my conscience is uh, telling me that uh, you should uh, have a change in, in, in Maguindanao. Mangu Didatu is the vice mayor of Buluan, a predominantly Muslim district in the south of Maguindanao. In 2009, he finally decides to run as governor in the upcoming local elections, therefore threatening the current rule of Andal Apatuan Sr. There's no uh, freedom in, in the province, so that's it. That's, that's, uh, uh, that started my... my, 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 my uh, avenue of thinking to, to, to fight against the Ampatuan. To challenge the Ampatuans, Manga Dadatu must first register his name as a candidate at the provincial capital of Sheriff Aguac. But he receives a warning not to proceed. There was a warning from my uh, friends through text messages and uh, uh, they said uh, that uh, I should not go there because uh, they should gonna kill me. So Mangu Didatu decides to form a convoy. But instead of going himself, he sends his wife and two sisters to file his name on his behalf. Filipino Muslims has a high respect on women. So I think uh, they should not hurt, uh, harm or, or hurt your uh, wife and your sisters. Being driven in the lead car is his wife, two sisters, and other close members of his family, together with several lawyers. In the following vehicles are 37 journalists eagerly awaiting the chance to report on such a historic journey. Television journalist Jiggy Manikad receives a call from an excited colleague inviting him to join the other journalists in the convoy. The journalist who called me was very excited, asking me to go with them. But I just reminded him that uh, it might be too dangerous for them. But uh, he said that being a big group he, he did not see anything wrong. Monette Salasai, a midwife at a local hospital, is wife to Napoleon Salasai, a publisher for a local newspaper. On that morning also, on that November 23, I was on morning duty. And I felt very unusual feeling that morning when I woke up. As the convoy nears the provincial capital of Sheriff Aguac, the filing of Mangu Dadatu's candidacy seems moments away. But suddenly, seemingly out of nowhere, bandits strike. Seconds later, the convoy has become hijacked. Where were they being taken to? Just a few hours earlier, as the convoy sets off, two reporters realize they have left something behind. So they decide to turn back to Buluan, vowing to catch up with the rest of the convoy later. When the two reporters return to the hotel, the reception staff informed them that somebody had been looking for them. Hotel crew told them that some military men were looking for journalists if they are journalists related, but since everybody was out, so they told the uh, military men Nobody was, uh, everybody was already out in the coverage. Who did these military men belong to? 